Hello and welcome to CAD Dimensions SolidWorks 2013 What's New Lunch and Learn. This is part one of three. My name is Franco Rotoli. I'm here with Lars Christensen and we will be going through some of the what's new features in SolidWorks 2013. Again, this is part one of three. There's a lot of new features in SolidWorks 2013. In the next three webinars in this series, we'll be talking about uh, some of the great new features and enhancements in SolidWorks 2013. So let's, uh, let's get started here. The first thing that I want to talk about is not the greatest slide to start with, but uh, first and foremost, SolidWorks 2013 is no longer supported with the Windows XP operating system. Some of you may have already known that. Um, it's been in all the blogs and on all the press releases, things like that. So you cannot install SolidWorks 2013 on Windows XP, whether it's 64 or 32-bit. Um, so Please, if you try to upgrade to 2013, make sure you're on Windows Vista or later. The good news is eDrawings is still supported, so if you have any old legacy machines or any machines down on the shop floor that need just eDrawings, um, eDrawings is supported on Windows XP as, as well as the Solid Network, Network License Manager. Okay, let's jump into some of the fun stuff. We'll talk about user interface. Uh, they've made some pretty neat enhancements to the UI in SolidWorks, as well as the whole SolidWorks experience. So let's uh, let's go in and jump over to my desktop. And we see here that I have my SolidWorks 2013 icon. The first thing that they changed is the splash screen. So I'm just going to open up SolidWorks. And you notice how quickly SolidWorks 2013 starts. It also is showing me what it's doing as it's starting up. Let's do that one more time. I'm just going to close out of SolidWorks and double click SolidWorks 2013. Notice it starts up very quickly and along the um, in the middle of the splash screen it's actually telling me what it's starting up. So if for whatever reason it does not start up or it freezes on startup I can actually see what SolidWorks is doing at the moment that it's freezing. How many times do you do this? You have SolidWorks started up and you double click the icon again. Well, they've added a cancel button right on the star, uh, right on the splash screen. That's very, very handy, so you don't get the two instances of SolidWorks. So if you can catch it, you can just click the cancel button right there, and it kills the process, the secondary process, right away, which is a nice feature to have if you tend to start up multiple instances of SolidWorks unintentionally. Again, right on the startup screen, you click cancel, and it kills the process. No, no uh, magic on my end there. It's just a very quick way to uh, to dismiss the second instance of SolidWorks if if you have it, or the first instance if if you accidentally start up SolidWorks. The next thing I want to talk about is in the open dialog. If we take a look at my stuff folder here, in the lower right hand corner, you can see that SolidWorks has added what's called quick filters to their dialog box, and also down here the drop down now remembers all files. The quick filters are a very quick way to filter out just parts, just parts and assemblies, or any combination of parts, assemblies, and drawings that you want to see. A great enhancement as well is this right here. It's filter top level assemblies. So if I click this, it searches this entire directory for top level assemblies, and it shows me um, my top level assemblies here. And obviously we still have the, the lovely Windows 7 preview over here. If I select one of these files, we have a, a very nice preview in here. Um, so again, a uh, very quick and easy way to filter out components uh, or different SOLIDWORKS files. And again, I can always still go to the drop-down and it just automatically picks these. Um, but it's a nice way to filter out combinations of those. So let's go ahead and open up a part here. Actually, this happens to be an assembly, but we'll open up this putter part. And we know a couple of years ago uh, they added the functionality on the S key on your keyboard brings up this sh keyboard shortcut. Um, in 2013 what we can do is we can right click and click customize. We can actually customize all four different keyboard shortcuts right from the same dialog. So no longer do you have to start a sketch and customize your keyboard shortcut, start a drawing, customize it, an assembly, and a part. So if you use the S key, it, it took a while to, to customize it. Now in SOLIDWORKS 2013, you can customize all four right from here. And again, these are just drag and drop. You can drag things on and off 
um, from any one of your toolbars to this S key. And that makes your SOLIDWORKS experience that much faster um, to, to create sketches and, and drawings and things like that. It, it makes it just that much easier. Um, and you can put any tools you want on this toolbar. Uh, the next thing that they added, again, a couple of years ago, they added the, the command search up here to the upper right-hand corner of your, of your toolbar. In SOLIDWORKS 2013, if I go to Tools Options, they've migrated that right over here to, in, uh, now I can search my Tools Options. <clears throat> so for example, if I type in Save, you can see here that it comes up with a bunch of different locations that the word Save is found in my Tools Options. Uh, so again, it, it eliminates the need for me to memorize where all of my options are, which is really nice. The, uh, the next thing that I want to talk about is the show reminder if document has not been saved. That's the little pop-up that comes up down here in the lower right-hand corner if you haven't saved your document for X number of minutes. Very handy to remind you to save. Sometimes it can get in the way though. So in 2013, they added this checkbox that we can automatically dismiss that dialog after X number of seconds, which is really nice. So you don't have to always go down there and click it. It's not always in your way. It'll automatically dismiss after the default is five seconds. So again, a nice little handy feature in SOLIDWORKS 2013 that they've added. Okay, next we're going to talk about SOLIDWORKS fundamentals and sketching. Uh, SOLIDWORKS fundamentals are just, again, it's kind of an extension of my last slide, which is the um, user interface. It just talks about the, the feel of SOLIDWORKS, some, some core functionality in SOLIDWORKS that has been enhanced, and obviously sketching is, is sketching. So let's jump back over to SOLIDWORKS. We have our putter assembly again here. And uh, what we're going to do is I'm just going to open up this part, the main part of the, of the putter. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a folder for all these fillets. Okay, we know this functionality that has been around for a while. And I'll just call this fillets. In SOLIDWORKS 2013, what they've done is now I can select a subset of these and add these to a new folder. So now I can add subfolders in my feature tree. So this I can call cosmetic. So now it's a it's a handy way to organize your tree and this works in parts and assemblies as well. So if you have any folders and you want to create subfolders in your parts or in your assemblies just to organize it a little bit better, now that functionality is supported in SOLIDWORKS 2013. Speaking of making things easier to find and more organized in your feature tree. A lot of times if you have a long feature tree, this one isn't too bad, but um, in the more complicated designs, you get a very long feature tree. In SOLIDWORKS 2013, what you can do is you can create favorites. So I can control select any number of features, right click and say add to favorites. What that does is it creates a shortcut at the very top of your tree and it creates uh, shortcuts up there. So now if I'm always if I always seem to be searching through my tree for a certain sketch, a layout sketch, or a reference plane, or whatever, I can now create favorites, and I won't, don't have to search through my tree anymore. I can just right-click. I can just find it up here at the um, at the under the favorites folder. And again, these are just shortcuts, so I can right-click. I can edit the sketch. I can hide, show the sketch. I can do whatever I want with these shortcuts. So in this case, the reference plane, if I want to create a sketch on the reference plane, I can do it right from here. And um, it's a very, very quick and easy way to find commonly used features in your tree. Again, uh, works for parts and assemblies. The next enhancement with our Feature Manager Design Tree is if I right click on the top level icon and I go to Tree Display, I can check the box that says Show Flat Tree View. What this does is it basically takes out all the plus signs in my tree and it, change it changes it from a hierarchy based tree to a history based tree. So now I can see whoever designed this created Sketch 1 first, then they created Boss Extrude 1, then Sketch 6, then Boss Extrude three, etc., etc. This is a handy way to diagnose other people's designs and see exactly what they did as they did it um, without having to look at sketch numbers, especially if you rename your sketches. Um, it, you can't tell which sketch was created first. So the flat tree view is a very handy way to do that. And again, if you right click the top level icon, you go to tree display 
and it's the show flat tree view. The next enhancement to the uh, SolidWorks um, user interface slash fundamentals is the, on the space bar. We all know that if I hit my space bar, my view orientation dialog comes up. So I'm just going to hit my space bar. And you can see now in SolidWorks 2013, I'm just going to pin this, it, uh, it gives us, it's called a view selection cube. I like to call it the view selection cube. I think the official name is the view selector. But what this does is it gives us facets on this cube to click on that I can automatically select my views very, very quickly without having to guess, well, which one is the right isometric view or the correct isometric view, uh, what's the bottom view. You can just select them from your view selector, which, again, this is handy if you have designs that the top of the part is not created on the top plane, you know, so your top view is not correct. You have to always reset it. Well, in SOLIDWORKS 2013, you can just pick on the appropriate facet of your cube, and it'll jump to that particular view. Additional enhancements with the view orientation dialog is a saved view. So we know we can zoom in here and I can click on add view or new view, right? And I can call this uh, zoomed ISO 2 or whatever I want. That's not new functionality. And wherever I am, I can select this and it'll jump me back to this view. The new functionality in SOLIDWORKS 2013 is that now I can save this view to SOLIDWORKS by clicking the little disk icon here. What this does is that now this camera angle, if you will, is saved internally to SOLIDWORKS and I can access this camera angle from any part or assembly that I have open. So if you make documentation where you always have the same screenshots of all your parts or you make drawings where it's the same strange isometric view just to get a good view of your components, you can now save that view and the zoom state and the angle and all that other good stuff is all saved identically. So you don't have to try to eyeball it, you know, print out a picture and then kind of just eyeball it. Now you can save these views to SOLIDWORKS and you can see here I have a bunch of saved views that I've done throughout the course of these presentations that I can change to very, very easily. Okay, and you can see it brings them up here so I can change them back and forth uh, very quickly and very easily. So that's a great new enhancement in SOLIDWORKS 2013 is that you can now save these views to SOLIDWORKS um, permanently. And if you make a mistake, obviously you can click on the X and it removes it from the document. It removes it from SOLIDWORKS. Okay, the next feature that we want to talk about, this next enhancement, enhanced feature that we want to talk about is the measure tool. I'm going to call it my measure tool. I have a keyboard shortcut set to the M key. Um, I'm just going to call that up and I'm going to measure some faces. So I want to measure from this face to this face. And by default, it measures the minimum distance. I can go in here and I can change um, to maximum distance, which doesn't really give me anything that's useful in this case. I can change to center to center. Again, doesn't really give me any useful dimensions because this arc is so large. What I really want is the distance from the center of this face to maybe the center of this face. So in SOLIDWORKS 2013 what they've done is they added this point to point tool. And what that does is it remembers where you click and that's where it measures between. The beauty of this is I can actually drag the points of where I click and the distance updates automatically. So I can drag it from here I can drag this around over here. I can even drag onto different faces. All right? And it obviously all updates. The XYZ dimensions update as well as the resultant distance all update. It's a handy way to measure your model if you're measuring between faces that may not have any selection entities on them. Okay, so you don't have to create a sketch point on there. You don't have to create split lines anymore. You can use this point to point tool and it gives you a great estimate of the distance between um, the two selected points. Now, another great enhancement they've made in SOLIDWORKS 2013 measure tool is how many times do you have a measurement and then you accidentally click off? Many times, right? In SOLIDWORKS 2013, they've added 
this dialog right here where it's a measurement history. So now for this instance of the measure tool, you can see all the different measurements that I've created. So I can very quickly call up the last measurement and I can copy and paste this into Notepad or Excel or Word or whatever I'm using, or I can just look at it and I can see that the last measurement that I took was 2.174 inches. Again, if I go in here and I measure even just the radius of this and click off, I can click measurement history and you can see that the last selection that I made was right there. So it's a very handy feature in SOLIDWORKS 2013 that they've added. The next thing we want to talk about, we know that we can go to tools, mass properties, and we can always, we've can we always been able to get the center of mass of our part. And it gives us a nice purple dialog here. It tells us the XYZ location of the center of mass. Well, what if I want to take a look at the center of mass as my design progresses? And I want to see it, I want to see my center of mass moving. Well, I'd have to go in and put a point there and always update my point. Well, no longer. In SOLIDWORKS 2013, we have the center of mass tool. So if I just search for mass, I can actually drag right from here right onto my toolbar. That's not new in SOLIDWORKS 2013. That's been around since uh, at least SOLIDWORKS 2012. So I can click the center of mass tool, and what that does is it adds a feature to the top of my tree called center of mass, and we can see the callout for the center of mass right here. And what that's going to do is if I roll back to the beginning of my part, to the first feature, we can see the center of mass there, and as I roll forward, we can see that the center of mass is actually moving, which is really nice. The, in addition to the center of mass feature at the top of my tree, if I right click this, I can click the center of mass reference point. And what that's going to do, it's going to add another feature to my tree directly above my rollback bar. So that now I can see the center of mass at this point versus the center of mass at the end of my design. So in this case, let's, uh, let's move this one up a little bit so we can see the difference from my first feature to my last feature. You can see the center of mass changed from here to here, or I should say from my first feature to my last feature, it changed from blue to white. The beauty of this is that these are selectable, so if I click my measure tool, I can actually measure between the two features so I can see how far my center of mass has moved in my X, Y, and Z, which is a very, very handy feature that they've added in SOLIDWORKS 2013. Again, center of mass works with parts and assemblies as well. You can call up the center of mass in your assembly of all your components, and you can call up the center of mass in your drawings as well, which is really neat. Um, so I really like the center of mass tool. This has been something that, that I have personally been asked for by, by you guys, by customers, for a long, long time, and they've finally added it in SOLIDWORKS 2013, and they have, they've added more features than I even expect. So again, this secondary center of mass reference point, you can actually drag up and down your tree so you can see at this point my center of mass was here, which is really nice. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to jump into sketching now, some enhancements that, they, that SOLIDWORKS has made to sketching, and I'm going to open up a part here that has a sketch on it. This is a side profile, just a sketch picture of a B-52 bomber, and if I edit this sketch we can see that I've already started tracing the nose cone of this bomber and what I need to do is I need to match this geometry right here. So what do I do? Typically you grab a spline right because it's not really an arc or anything like that and I'm just gonna start sketching my spline trying to match this geometry as closely as I can. Make sure my tangency is there so I'm just gonna grab tangent there as well as tangent there and that looks pretty good I'm not quite on the sketch but let's go ahead and take a look at our curvature here we know we can right click on any piece of sketch geometry and click show curvature combs and what the curvature combs do, do is basically uh, show you the curvature around your geometry so we can see here I have what's called an inflection point it's where the curvature changes direction we obviously don't want this especially on an aircraft we want uh, this would create an eddy in here and create turbulence which obviously we don't want so let, let me try to match this geometry a little bit better 
here we can see our curvature just kind of goes all over the place and we can see even little tweaks to the geometry really changes our curvature quite a bit and it's kind of a mess. Not only this, but has anyone in the audience ever tried to fully define a spline? It's nearly impossible, you, right? You have to define every single sketch point. So what we're going to do is we're going to delete this and introduce the new feature that they've added in SOLIDWORKS 2013 sketching. It's called conics. What a conic is, is the geometry that gets created when a plane crosses a cone. So we can see here we have different solutions. We can go anywhere from a circle to an ellipse all the way down to a hyperbola, all depending on the angle of that plane. That angle is called the row value. So let's go ahead and take a look at how this tool works. I'm going to click on conic, or actually, for those of you who saw it uh, when I was customizing the, the shortcut key, I actually added the conic tool right to my shortcut key. So I'm going to click on the start point, the end point, and then I'm just going to drop down the tangent points. And you can see it, I don't know how well this is coming through on the web meeting, but you can see that there are the inference lines automatically get created. And now all I do is specify the row value. All right, so I'll just drop it down about right there. To fully define this conic, I grab my smart dimension tool. It's one dimension. I just specify the row value and boom, I'm done. We can see that it is a fully defined sketch now. Let's take a look at our curvature. We can see we get a nice smooth curvature in here and no inflection points. Inherently to a conic, you cannot have negative curvature because you cannot have a negative radius on a cone, right? Um, if I delete this row value, I can show you how this curvature changes. I can go all the way extreme this way and the curvature does not change, or excuse me, the curvature does not go negative. Same if I go up here, the curvature is always very consistent and very smooth. So again, very, very easy to create a conic in SOLIDWORKS 2013. Again, this is something that I've been asked for for a long time is to create conic curves in SOLIDWORKS. So this is a great way to do it. The next enhancement in sketching in SOLIDWORKS 2013 has to do with sketching automatic dimensions as you sketch. Um, in SOLIDWORKS 2012, I believe, maybe 2011, they added sketch numeric input. And what that is, is as you're sketching, you can see that it's adding the dimensions as you sketch. Well, a lot of times, if you have this activated, it tends to litter your sketch with too many dimensions. And at the end, it's either going to be overdefined or it's giving you the dimensions that you don't want. Well, in SOLIDWORKS 2013, in Tools Options, under Sketch, we have Enable On-Screen Numeric Input. That's the old enhancement. In SOLIDWORKS 2013, we have this checkbox, Only Create the Dimension When a Value is Entered. So I can continue sketching, and it doesn't add my dimensions until I type a value in. So if I type 5, then that's where it adds the dimension. You can see here, I can go back and forth. Same thing with an arc. It's not going to add the dimension until I type it in. So if I click 2 and then we do an arc and add a value of uh, you know a radius of 3, then it adds the dimension. Otherwise it does not add the dimensions. Which is really nice if you use this feature where it doesn't litter your sketch with, uh, with dimensions. It only puts the dimensions in that you want. So those are neat features that they've added in sketching for SOLIDWORKS 2013. Okay, the next topic we're going to talk about is import-export, mainly import, um, some important enhancements that they've made in SOLIDWORKS 2013. I actually have a video that we're going to play. How many times, this is SOLIDWORKS 2012, do you go to File, Open, and you browse out uh, onto your desktop for an IGES file that you maybe you got from a customer or a vendor, and it starts to open it. And immediately after opening, it starts parsing the file and then starts flashing that it's processing all these parts. Well, you minimize SOLIDWORKS, and what do you see? You see your desktop getting littered with all the components of this assembly. Again, this is SOLIDWORKS 2012. In SOLIDWORKS 2013, what, what they've done is they've enhanced the open or import process to where it does not create these files until you save the assembly. So it'll open up all the files into memory, but it will not create the physical files on your desktop. 
you can see here even trying to kill SolidWorks 2012, it doesn't stop the files from getting created all over your desktop. So this would take many, many hours to, or maybe at least many, many minutes to delete all these files off your desktop, just kind of a pain. In SolidWorks 2013, that doesn't happen anymore. So it creates all the files in memory and doesn't create the physical files on your desktop or whatever folder that I just is in. It doesn't create those files until you actually save the assembly. In SolidWorks 2012, they've they added that for um, step files and parasolid files, and now in SolidWorks 2013, they've enhanced that for iGIS files as well. They've expanded that behavior out for iGIS files as well. So again, that's a nice handy little feature that they've added for SolidWorks 2013. When it comes to performance improvements, even small speedups can have a big effect. When you use SolidWorks all the time, reducing the time it takes to perform a frequent task has a cumulative impact in helping you get your job done faster. Let's take a look at some key improvements. Over the past several releases, SolidWorks has made some great improvements in graphics performance by utilizing the graphics card for real view rendering tasks. Appearances that use surface mapping require a lot more rendering information than other techniques, such as box, planar, or cylinder appearance mapping. This can cause a significant performance hit when interacting with the model. In SolidWorks 2013, this rendering technique has been reworked to give consistent graphics performance no matter what appearance mapping method you use. Another graphics area that can slow down performance on large assembly models is shaded with edges. There is a significant drop in the response time compared to displaying your models with the edges switched off. By utilizing the GPU on the graphics card for edge rendering, a significant performance improvement has been achieved in SOLIDWORKS 2013, especially in large assembly mode. We see here the slide for large assembly mode, and we can see, depending on the graphics card, the, the level of improvements. Drawing view updates now take advantage of multi-core processors. Multiple background processes are launched to update drawing views in parallel instead of sequentially. So for drawing sheets with lots of views, the update, update time is significantly reduced. We've been asking for this for a long time where SOLIDWORKS takes advantage of multiple core CPUs. Well, this is the beginning. This is where we start with drawing views. Finally, configuration switching. When you make a change to the model configuration and then switch to a different configuration, sometimes there's a delay while the model is updated even though nothing changed in the other configuration. In SOLIDWORKS 2013, the time it takes to switch configurations has been cut significantly, especially on larger models with longer rebuild times. By taking advantage of the same technology behind feature freeze, updates now only happen when changes impact the selected configurations. This applies to both parts and assemblies. Okay, let's jump into parts and features next. If we jump over to SOLIDWORKS here, I have this, uh, this casing for its belt housing. The first thing we're going to jump into is if I zoom in here, we see we have a sketch that has, you can see it has four parallel lines. New in SOLIDWORKS 2013, if I go in and extrude this, I can actually extrude multiple thin contours at the same time. In earlier versions of SOLIDWORKS, this would yell at us and it would say that you, would have, you could not do multiple thin contours at the same time. So new to SOLIDWORKS 2013, multiple thin contours. It's a, nice, uh, it's a nice feature, especially if you're making ribs like this, for example. I'm just going to go in and make these mid-planes so that they're centered, the ribs are centered on my sketches. And now I can right-click and go to up to next. Another new feature in SOLIDWORKS 2013 is on the right click when you're in the feature, you can actually change direction 1 as well as direction 2. In earlier versions of SOLIDWORKS, you only had direction 1 and you had to go over here to, for direction 2. Now you can right click and you have, um, you have the option to click up to next or up to body as well. So here we can see we have our features that go in both directions and I didn't have to travel my mouse all the way over here. We'll just click OK and actually you can right click and click OK right from here. So SOLIDWORKS every release they try to eliminate as much mouse movement as they can and in this release again they've done that with the with the right click you can choose either direction or both directions and click the OK. The OK is not new um, They've had that for quite a while, but in SOLIDWORKS 2013, direction two, now you can access from the right click. The next thing I want to do from for this rib 
is I want to add fillets. So I can very easily go up here, select my fillet tool, and click on this edge, and we know we have tangent propagation. Well, in SOLIDWORKS 2013, they've brought over this little pop-up dialog from the, what's called the fillet expert. And in here, I can very quickly select many, many different edges. You can see this one is um, selecting these edges. This one is between the left feature and the part, so that's selecting seven edges. I can choose the right feature or even all the features in my entire part, which takes a few seconds to actually select. So very easily, with two clicks, I can pick all my edges that I need. The fillet's a little bit too big. I'm just going to come over here and change this to a more reasonable size and say OK. So no more rotating, zooming, panning, things like that. I very easily and very quickly with two clicks of my mouse got all my fillets around my ribs. Again, that feature is not new to SOLIDWORKS. It only it used to be buried underneath the fillet expert. Now they've moved it forward into the regular fillet tool. Next, let's open up a new part called the muffler guard here. And for this one, what we're going to do is we are going to show a, an, an enhancement in SOLIDWORKS 2013 to the pattern tool. And the linear pattern tool has, has not changed very much over the past uh, many releases. But in SOLIDWORKS 2013, let's take a look at what we can do. We have this cutout of this slot right here. And I'm just going to create a linear pattern of it. If I just select it, linear pattern, same procedure as I normally do. Click, a vert, click an edge for a direction. And it's going to be 30 millimeters times five instances. Now that's not exactly what I want. I basically want to fill this whole side with these vent holes. So what I want is down here at the very bottom of my linear pattern window is instances to vary. And again, this is the new feature in SOLIDWORKS 2013. I can vary my pattern per instance. So I'm going to pattern my direction, or excuse me, pattern my spacing in direction one by seven millimeters. So what it does is it adds seven millimeters to every instance. So we have 30, then 37, et cetera, et cetera, and it keeps adding seven millimeters to each one. I also have the option to choose the feature dimensions to vary as well. So I can click on feature dimensions and I can change these as well. So I'm going to change the length from 80 and I'm going to vary it 40 millimeters per instance and I'm going to change the width by 4 millimeters per instance. And when I click OK, we can see what the geometry looks like. Very nice. One problem though, this last slot is obviously a little bit too big. So let's go in here and edit this pattern. And I can click on this purple orb. If I click on full preview, it'll actually show the preview. Um, if I click on this orb, then I can skip the instance, we're used to that, or I can modify the instance, which gives it its own little flag here, where I can change this length from 240 to 150 millimeters. When we click OK, we can see there we have five different shaped, different sized slots, all created from the same feature. All of these dimensions were changed just with a linear pattern. In earlier versions of SOLIDWORKS, I would have to go in and I would have to make five individual sketches and change these manually. No longer in SOLIDWORKS 2013, I can do it all from the linear pattern tool. Very handy feature. I, this is one of my favorite enhancements of SOLIDWORKS 2013. Let's open up a, another part, this is an assembly here, of a wireless router. A new feature in SOLIDWORKS 2013 has to do with surfacing. So routers have become essentially consumer products at this point. They used to be buried in IT closets, but now pretty much every home has a wireless router. So they've become more of a consumer product. Well, in if we open up this the top part of it, okay, so this is the top part of the plastic piece. Well, so now we have a boring top to this component and we want to make it a little bit swoopier, a little bit curvier, a little bit more user friendly for just consumers. So we have this surface that we have that we want to represent the top 
of our wireless router. If I take a section view, you can see exactly what the surface is doing. It's cutting through the top here, and it's actually adding material in here, and we have the Wi-Fi logo over here that we want to emboss into the resultant face. In earlier versions of SOLIDWORKS, what you would have to do is you would have to cut with surface, extrude up to surface, um, maybe replace face, things like that. A lot of steps, probably five or six different surfacing steps that you would have to do to get this surface to replace that top face. In SOLIDWORKS 2013, they added a tool called, if we go to Insert Features, they added a tool called the Intersect Tool. And what the Intersect Tool does is it takes all those features and blends them into one. So all I do is I select the two items, so the solid and the surface. I click Intersect and it does some Boolean operations. Now I have a long list of regions that are intersecting. And basically what I'm going to do is click on the regions to exclude. So I'm going to pick there, 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 and there. And this one as well. I can also click consume surfaces down here which will eliminate the need to delete that surface. When I click OK it takes a few seconds to rebuild. But again remember this is much much faster than having to do all this surface all these surface tools manually. And we can see that very quickly I got my resultant surface. We have the Wi-Fi logo embossed. If I do my section cut, we can see that it has both removed material and added material all in one easy step. So new in SOLIDWORKS 2013, the intersect command. Again, this is, this is also one of my favorite tools in, in SOLIDWORKS 2013. I know I, I tend to say that a lot when I do these rollouts, but uh, I, I think in SOLIDWORKS 2013 they've added a lot of really neat tools that do a lot of uh, complex functions that really make people's lives a whole lot easier. The last thing we're going to talk about in parts and features, I'm actually going to open up an assembly. So we have this assembly here. Lars is going to do an assembly presentation in the in the next Lunch and Learn. But for right now, I'm just going to steal a little bit of his thunder and I'm going to jump ahead. We see here that we have an assembly and it has a lot of tapped holes in it. And with tapped holes come cosmetic threads. New in SOLIDWORKS 2013, you can right click the annotations folder and click on details and you can actually turn off cosmetic threads right from the assembly level. So no longer do you have to dig in and find each one of those holes and hide the cosmetic threads manually. You can turn them off just as you turn off planes, just as you turn off um, things like that. Very quickly and easily you can turn off all your cosmetic threads. So again that's right click the annotations folder, click on details, and check cosmetic threads. And it shows them and hides them which significantly unclutters your design as you're working on it. The next thing we're going to talk about in SOLIDWORKS 2013 is I have this component here, this end plate, and I need to drill some holes here so that, uh, so that these rods can go in there. These are actually dowel holes, so I'm going to edit this part and in SOLIDWORKS 2013 I'm going to click on Hole Wizard and let's take a look at what we have in our Hole Wizard in SOLIDWORKS 2013. Added to our hole types are now dowel holes. So I can automatically put in dowel holes right from the Hole Wizard. So I jump in here, I can very quickly add these two dowel holes, click OK make sure that I made them through all. And now if I edit this component in its own window, we can see that the dowel holes get added in. 
But that's not where it ends. If I create a drawing of this component, it doesn't really matter what size just yet, and I drag in a view, the dowel symbols automatically come in, just as any other annotation would. That's a huge time saver in SOLIDWORKS 2013 that you don't have to go looking for all your dowel holes and putting in the dowel symbols manually. They automatically get brought in because SOLIDWORKS knows that the dowel holes were created using the hole wizard. That's just a small segment of the enhancements in parts and features. Again, because of time's sake, I can't show you everything. Take a look at the what's new in the help if we go to help, what's new, and the PDF, I believe it's 233 pages long. So there's quite a few features that we can't add in the, in the webinars, and especially in the Lunch and Learn format. So feel free to give us a call if you have any questions, by all means. Again, we're just touching on a small segment of the what's new in SOLIDWORKS 2013. Okay, I'm going to pass the presentation over to Lars, who's going to talk about costing and sustainability. Take it away, Lars. SOLIDWORKS have added some uh, pretty neat uh, functionalities to uh, costing in SOLIDWORKS 2013. Uh, so costing was introduced last year in 2012, but, uh, and they're continuously developing on it uh, as, as, the, as the versions goes on here. So let me just uh, jump into uh, to SOLIDWORKS here. And um, if we go over to the evaluation tab over here, SOLIDWORKS gives us a lot of neat uh, tools in here to evaluate different things. And uh, costing, um, like I said, was introduced last year. Um, this year with costing, first of all, the interface have gotten a little bit new um, look that when you click on it, the part itself will figure out if it's doing uh, sheet metal or if it's doing a uh, machine part. But what's new for 2013 is that it actually now also uh, can do multi-body parts. What is uh, really powerful that, that they're uh, doing that kind of development on it. So um, on, on top of that, you can actually also go in here and um, you know exclude bodies and stuff like that. Now, if you haven't played with costing, I would definitely uh, um, you know encourage you to, to take a look at it. It's all done with these templates up here, custom templates. You can do all kinds of stuff with those templates. You know, putting in your shop rates and, and machining. Uh, specific for what, whatever you're doing in, in your uh, manufacturing facility um, and, and gives you a really good way to kind of like evaluate uh, your parts uh, right inside of SOLIDWORKS. So you'll see here that I ran costing and we will see we get down here displayed um, a price with a, uh, with a number in here. Now again this is all extracted out of this template. Now if we look over on the left we have a costing tab over here and you will see over here that it actually have broken down to the different parts and I can even double click here on the seat and exclude everything else from it and immediately it updates the price over here to the right. Um, you will see here there's all the stuff that extracted right out of uh, that template, uh, that custom template that you can completely modify yourself. Um, also on, on this part here if I go over to my feature tree in SOLIDWORKS I actually have a uh, a logo here that is uh, suppressed. I'm going to unsuppress it, and you will see the logo comes here. That immediately over here, Solar is going to go ahead and update that price with uh, those uh, cutouts here that possibly maybe was done with a laser or something like that. And of course, I can quickly go over here and uh, bring this back to a multi body pl place in the, uh, the states, and the price will be updated uh, right there now with those cutouts. So that's really neat that Solo is kind of like, uh, you know, continue developing, really giving us these evaluation tools. I can also go over here to the left here and add custom operations. So maybe I know over here that uh, I need to, uh, to weld uh, these feet to it or something like that. I can actually go in here and add operations right on the fly uh, for this. Now again, this could also be set up with these custom templates and stuff like that, but this is just, if you had like one Thing you needed to get added on, you see the price gets added on, and we will see over here on our setup tab that our well time has now been, been added on. So uh, costing for multi-body parts, uh, this is definitely some uh, some pretty neat stuff. Um, we also um, have added on for 2013 here, if I open up this part, and I think this is huge, is actually uh, turning uh, parts is now also um, brought in here. So now we actually have a new type of stock, uh, what is a cylinder, for a turned part, 
and uh, it will give us uh, those uh, that price in here again uh, depending on our templates now you will see over here you got all the different operations turning operation but what I really li like to point out here is that it actually also discovered that there is a mill operation in here so even from a quoting standpoint you know I'm not saying that this wouldn't have been found in a quoting scenario where you're sitting there with a yellow pad and paper and uh, trying to figure this out but as quickly you can get that kind of information extracted right out of, of SOLIDWORKS also what have been added uh, in 2013 uh, for the mill section is that it actually now also can evaluate the stock and see that there is some material that needs to be removed here around uh, this uh, this core this island here on the center here so that's another thing uh, we get applied uh, now with the with 2013 on top of that if we're looking at this part here uh, we see we have a hole in the center now a big hole in the center that can be kind of like depending on what kind of shop you have um, if that's going to be drilled or milled right depending on what kind of tooling you have available and stuff like that SOLIDWORKS makes that pretty easy that you can actually go in here and I can actually right click here and I can choose what I want to do with this hole do I want to drill or I want to mill it um, but I can actually also do something that we are used to in SOLIDWORKS with just dragging it up on the milling operation and now it automatically uh, um, is, is considered a milling operation here I can go in and right click on it and pick whatever tool that um, that I have in my template to machine this and again the, the price is updating so definitely when it comes to uh, to SOLIDWORKS and this costing module that was added in 2012 they keep on developing on it and, and the way I look at it here is that you know this might not take you all the way to the end but it surely is going to help you uh, you know, get down uh, on the road of, of pricing things out and, and, and really give you a good evaluation of, you know, where is your product uh, price-wise and stuff like that. And like I said earlier, it's all done with these templates that can be completely customized and stuff like that. So I would definitely say that, um, you know, if you haven't had a chance uh, from last year to look at, um, at costing, I would definitely recommend that you uh, that you spend a little bit of time to look into it, especially with these new uh, really neat features in there. Next, I'm going to talk about sustainability. So, sustainability was introduced in SolidWorks um, a few years ago, and uh, I think it's kind of interesting to see how that is kind of like developed with a lot of our customers. Um, you know, it, it, it sounds like very much like we're all now going to wear green T-shirts and really you know uh, all think green but we see more and more of our customers using this product um, you know the, the, I think the theory is kinda like uh, let's jump back into SOLIDWORKS that uh, you know if, if, if SOLIDWORKS gives you these tools available that um, you know we can go in here and we can actually uh, use this data if it's available to us so the sustainability tab is sitting right up here next to the costing tab again under the evaluation button here and um, turn the, the sustainability on here uh, you will see that it's going to go in and quickly just uh, run a quick analysis on this uh, this part here and uh, it's really easy um, to, to, to read this this data here uh, you know it quickly gives us you know the carbon footprint and energy and, and all this this stuff in here so new for for 2013 um, is that, that we've got some new options in here like you can say you can see here we, we see the data that was always injection mold and stuff like that but new for 2013 is we can actually choose um, what we're looking for here with, with regards to some paint options so we can go in and say well our part is not painted and you will quickly see how uh, this whole thing here gets updated as we're going along live so again I think that you know with good engineers good designers um, having these kind of tools available you know this data available gives people a chance to to use it um, also uh, a thing that was added in 2013 is um, that they actually give you this material financial impact down here what well, is probably pretty important that you kind of like you know uh, we all you know it all comes down to money in the end and and this gives you a good idea to, to keep a good baseline on it it will also in 2013 display in a tracy format if you if that's what you're looking for uh, instead of the the standardized uh, a cml and uh, then also for 2013 they have actually also added that you can now export your your information out to uh, a, a gabby uh, LCA software what is like a, a full-blown sustainability uh, impact 
you know, from, from cradle to grave kind of program for, 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 your, for your part. So SolidWorks kind of like works with that and kind of like gives you that data. So again, sustainability, um, definitely uh, keeping on developing on that too, gives you a chance to really see the impact uh, of your part. So some neat functions also with sustainability uh, in 2013. So definitely, you know, again, if you haven't had a chance to, to look at it, uh, I would definitely recommend that you do it. And everybody has Sustainability Express. Uh, that comes with, with, with SOLIDWORKS standards. So everybody have a chance to at least go in here and, and poke around with it a little bit and kind of like see how these evaluation tools in SOLIDWORKS can really help you, uh, you, you get along, so get further with your, with your product development. So um, take a look at it and um, some neat new functions uh, both in costing and sustainability in SOLIDWORKS 2013. Okay, thank you Lars. And uh, for everyone, please stay tuned for next week's webinar uh, where we'll be covering configuration, sheet metal, assemblies, and piping and tubing. So thank you again for attending, and um, we'll open up the forum for questions. Please use the chat or the questions section on the webinar, and uh, we'll do our best to answer them. If, Of course, if you have any other questions, please feel free to give us a call at any one of our offices, and we'll be very happy to answer any questions that you have on anything you saw here today or anything else on what's new in SOLIDWORKS 2013. Thank you again for attending, and uh, like I said, if you have any questions, please use the chat or the questions section on the webinar. We'll keep it open for about 5-10 more minutes. Thanks.